Well, the president's budget obviously won't gonna, is not going to pass. So what message is he trying to convey by putting it out there? Let's ask Dan Mitchell of the Cato Institute. What do you think, Dan? I think he's giving the message that big government is a good thing and that higher taxes, especially on job creators, entrepreneurs, and investors, are a way to finance big government. Now, of course, he's not really financing big government because there's a lot of red ink, uh, but the key message is that we are on a path of bigger and bigger government. Sooner or later, we'll be like Europe, and we have seen how that turns out. Well, his explanation, I put forth by Jack Lew, his, his chief of staff yesterday, one of the many appearances he made was, Jack Lew said, if we were to put in austerity now, meaning to cut back on government expenses, it would take the economy the wrong way into austerity. Now, the point is, you're not talking about austerity. I'm not talking about austerity. I'm just talking about less government spending and more growth, not austerity, growth in the private sector. They don't seem to get that. Well, the first thing to understand is that austerity in the minds of the administration is a Keynesian concept. It can mean higher taxes, which, of course, they're happy with. It could also mean lower spending, which they haven't even come close to trying yet. Uh, in the, the, the mindset, though, of those of us at the Cato Institute and elsewhere, what we should be doing is reducing the burden of government spending, freeing up more resources for the productive sector of the economy. Countries that have done that, like Canada in the 1990s, got more economic growth. But if your definition of austerity is like the United Kingdom, where you raise a bunch of taxes and you have spending going up, not down, well, of course that's not good for the economy. And so the administration's Keynesian mindset not to mention all the special interest politics of buying votes and creating dependency, that leads them to exactly this kind of budget uh, that we saw released today. You know, the other thing it leads to is, is less revenues for the government. Revenues have come down as a percent of GDP by about two full percentage points in the past couple of years. And that's largely because, at least in, from the corporate sector, the fact that there are so many individual tax incentives, these little... A little bits, itsy bitsy tax incentives, the nickel and dime incentives here and there. Uh, that's what actually has led to a lot less revenue coming in from the corporate sector anyway. Why don't they just lower the rate, get rid of deductions and leave it at that? We have a 72,000 page monstrosity uh, of an internal revenue system. And obviously, if we just ripped it up, and what was something simple and fair like a flat tax, yeah. we could generate more money with lower tax rates because of economic growth and better compliance. Well, and that's but what Simpson you, you Bowles can't... did. That's what the president's own commission recommended. Well, the Simpson Bowles took a, a step in that direction, yeah. uh, but not nearly as far as they should have gone. And, of course, they also tried to make it a money grab for bigger government. The problem that the administration has on the revenue side is because the economy is still weak, that is depressing revenues because there's just not as much taxable right. income out there. Right. And then they're using the tax code as, as a, basically a tool for raising campaign cash and buying votes. We'll give you a tax credit here, a tax deduction there, a preference here, a shelter there, an exemption over here. Let's get rid of that corrupt mess. And unfortunately, yeah. Bush did some of it, too. Sure he did. But the, the bottom line, Dan, is my point. The economy's not going to grow, given this kind of... It's not going to grow to the extent that they will get the revenues they need. So the deficits are just going to continue to climb, right? There's no way that we can ever climb out of the ditch that we're in if we have permanent slow growth because government is too big and the tax code is too onerous. I mean, I'm not joking when I say that we're on a path to becoming a failed European welfare right. state. You look at the demographics, you look at the long run projections. I don't know whether we hit the wall 10 years from now or 20 years from now, but if we don't make a radical change and go back, I mean, heck, I was going to say go back to Reaganomics. I'd be happy to go back to Clintonomics because government, <laughs> which was a much smaller burden of, of GDP was. than yeah. it is today. Yeah. Dan Mitchell from Cato. It's sobering discussion, but it's absolutely true what you say. Thank you, Dan.